Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for your fire. We thank you for the truth. Father, we ask for your word to go forth, Father God, in, inside of us and do the work in our minds, in our hearts, God, equipping us, changing us. And making us strong and bring us into one spirit and one truth. Father, let the spirit of wisdom and revelation come in the knowledge of you. In Jesus' mighty name. Today's message is called Authorized. Authorized. Who wrote the book? Most people would say man wrote it. Everyone says, that's what the world always says is, eh, well, man wrote the Bible. But we know that God authorized the man to write what the man wrote. And how many trillions of books have been written in the world? And how many books have been written about one book? More than any other book in the world. So many people have even written... Nobody has really written a book about a book. But everybody's written hundreds of books about this one book. This is, is the supreme authority. That's why. Why is everybody writing about the Bible? Because it's the supreme authority. It is the book of life. It is the book about, above every book. It's the number one selling book in the world. And it's called the book of the law. Even Jesus walked out the book and wrote more on the book that was from the book. And now we have an inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Books pointing to one book. That is a man-made is it man-made flesh and dwelt see Jesus was fully man in the flesh. And He dwelt among us, and He was the living Word, which is the living book. We are called to be little books, birthed out of the big book. This is the book of life. If Jesus is the Word, and the Word made flesh, and the Word dwelt among us, and Jesus has His brothers and sisters, and the Bible says that, that Jesus... Is our and God is our Father, and the, the Father and the Holy Spirit are one, and then He has a spirit of adoption, then we should be little books. And Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren, plus He's the first fruit of many. So because of Jesus, when we're born again, where are we birthed out of in our spirit? The Spirit of God. We are called to be little books birthed out of the big book. Living epistles, we see that in the Bible, and we see oracles of God as spoken in the book of Peter. In Joshua 1.8, it says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. And we know in Hebrews that God says, I'm going to write my book, my words on your heart, and you will be the living book. And thou shalt meditate day and night, and thou mayest observe and do according to all that is written thereof. And then shall you make your way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So we see that even after the fall of man and Adam and Eve, that God chose a people that if they would follow the book, he would protect them, He would bless them, and He would prosper them, even in a cursed land, in a cursed time. Because of what? Faith in the book and the, the author that authorized the book. So many write books, but how many books are inspired by the Holy Spirit? So if we're the pen, then who is the writer, right? Man will say, oh God, you know, man wrote the book. Yeah, but it was, it was God. David said things like in Psalms 45, 1 through 3, My heart is, is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made 
touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. That there are fairest children of men, grace be poured into my lips. Therefore God has blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O mighty, most mighty, and the glory of thy majesty. And then we know that David sought kingdoms and took territory in the flesh. That God had an army in the house of David and he had his people and they would take territory and things in the natural. But now God's given us the keys of David and we're going to get into that. And he's given us the power and the authority just like he gave to David. And when David fought the giant and when David took out the bear and the lion, he, he did it in the name of the Lord. David also did it by the Spirit of God. Now we know that the Bible says that the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist because John the Baptist was never in the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God could not come on the earth until Jesus went and died on the cross and went and took the keys of hell, death, and the grave and and took the authority back to give us the kingdom that came after he died on the cross. And John was the greatest prophet before Jesus and John died before Jesus went to the cross. So John was the last one. So if I ask what you, you know, what is the reason for the Bible, I suppose, will come with many different reasons. People have, you know, all kinds of reasons. But I can sum it up in two reasons. The Bible shows the fall of mankind and the redemption of mankind through Jesus Christ. The first Adam had all authority and lost it in the garden. And we were given the law. The second Adam, named Jesus Christ, came and took back what was lost and gave us the power to become the sons of God. Because Jesus... Nothing of our own works or merit or power, but by His Spirit. He came and took back what was stolen or given to the enemy through disobedience. See, at, the devil came and, dis, and, and basically he, he took what God had given to Adam and Eve through their disobedience. So everyone says, he stole it, he connived it, he... He manipulated it, but they, had, they gave it to him by their action. And the Bible says the action, the sin of one man, many fell, the, and it'll be, it'll be one man that brings everybody back to power and authority and to the house of God and to the garden. So it was the sin of one man that all mankind fell, and it would be Jesus that if you believe in him and repent and be born again, will also bring could bring everybody back to their relationship with their heavenly Father. Basically, from the beginning of the Bible to the end, that's basically what it's all about. But there's so much more in there. So he came and took back what was lost and gave us the power to become the sons of God, of God because Jesus. And what he did, he came and he took back what was stolen or given to the enemy through disobedience. Luke 19, 9 through 10. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost. And everybody says, oh, souls, we're saving souls, we're saving souls. That wasn't the only thing that was lost. See, in the garden, souls were lost. The first souls were Adam and Eve. They were now lost because of their sin. They were out of the garden. They weren't lost in the sense God knows where we're at all the time. But now they were lost in the direction of being led by the truth, the Holy Spirit. Now they're under deception. Now they're under lies. Now their father is the devil. So what, what was lost also was the authority that was given to them. The dominion. Adam and Eve were able to name animals. They were able to do things by the authority that God gave them. There was 
There was nothing that no sickness could be on them. No disease, no, no fear, no nothing until they disobeyed God. That's why it says through one man's obedience, mankind fell. And through one man's obedience, through one man's disobedience, all mankind fell. Through one man's obedience, God will bring, can bring us all back. And again, it's all going to be choice. So, and this message is, on, uh, is, uh, is called authorized because this message is basically on authority. And why we have it and what we need to do with it and why aren't we using it because we have it. So, dominion and power, God still had it. So, in other words, Adam and Eve lost it and gave it to the devil. Man gave it to the devil. Of course, God allowed all that. He knew all that was going to happen and he's having, having the plan of all mankind for us to be, make choices. The whole thing was about he wanted men and women to have choices. So he, but he also showed them what it was in the beginning when there was no sin. They, weren't, they were naked and they didn't realize they were naked. They were, there was no shame, no guilt, no. And that's what we have today through sin. Shame, guilt, hurt, pain. Pain now in childbearing. All those different things. So God still had it. God had dominion and power, but he, he gave it over to the devil. God still had it. And he always did, but man lost it. Or mankind. So God's still the ultimate authority. But on the earth, we lost it. Mankind lost what God had given them. So Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. It was not only souls, not only into sin, but it was the authority and dominion that was given to them from the beginning. Is everybody following me? Okay. But now, this is the problem with religion. With doctrines, with people, they camp at Jesus saves us, saved us. Let's wait for heaven. That's basically been the biggest problem with the church up to this day. A church without power and authority is a church that's reckless, a church that doesn't overcome, a church that is powerless, a church that gets led by their emotions, gets led by everything else but the Holy Spirit and the Word. But now we have Jesus brought the kingdom, right? But why? He didn't only come to save us, but He came and He gave us the same authority that He had and He took. And Jesus still and never sinned on the earth, so He still had all the authority. So in other words, even because... Why did we lose our authority? It was before, from sin. So when Jesus came, He still had authority because He still didn't sin, and He came from God. So He came on the earth. But if Jesus would have ever sinned one time on the earth, He would have also lost that authority. That's why Satan took Him up to the pinnacle of the high mountain, and he tried to get Him to sin, get Him to worship other gods, get Him to, to fear, get Jesus to give in to the devil. And if He would have fall for those temptations, we wouldn't be here today. But God already knew that it was written that Jesus would overcome the world. And God saw it all, like we've talked about that before, about seeing everything. In the beginning, He saw the end. So, Jesus brought the kingdom. So He came from heaven, not through the lineage of 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 uh, sin, but through the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary, and Mary had Jesus, basically it. So he had no sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us not, and died for our sins that we could be saved. And he died for our sins that we also could have authority back. He also died that he who knew no sin became sin. So what, all that was stolen in the garden, Jesus is taking it back. But he already had authority even before he went to the cross. Why? Because he had no sin.
But he did. And Jesus still never sinned on the earth. He still had all authority from God. Fully man and fully God. Satan will test us. He will, as he tested Jesus. Satan will make you not... What is Satan trying to do? Make you not to believe what you have and what Jesus did. He'll try to convince you to sin so you don't believe it. So we look at ourselves when we're strong, we feel like we have authority. But when we sin, we feel like we don't have authority. But again, it's not... Our authority doesn't come from us. It comes from Jesus. But I'm here to tell you that we have all authority given to you. Because He descended to the lower parts and opened the gates of hell and He gave the church the power and authority. Period. Our problem is, is what not, we nev never was a, it never was the source. It was always the belief. So in other words, it's never, the power has already been there, the power is here now. It's not the source is the problem. It's our belief. Do you see what I'm saying? There's the power socket. We're so carnally minded, we know, unless the power goes out. But we don't see it, but we know the minute we plug something into that thing right there, it's gonna, the vacuum will start up. Well, we believe when we sin, we unplug ourselves from Jesus. We do consciously, but we can get right back in by, like, by, right? Or nobody would make it. Like, if once we get born again and then we sin once, it's all over with, then we'd all be over with because none of us, we're all learning to walk in power. And we're all learning to walk without sin. So that's where the devil messes with your minds in condemnation. So it's when you fast and pray and do all that and you're ready to go you know, preach and cast out demons. But the authority is in Jesus, not in you. So we got to get that straight because that is where the devil starts to take the power back that Jesus gave us. Then we look at ourselves and we feel that we have, and when we feel we have authority, but Jesus gave us the authority. Our problem is not ever. It, it, it's not ever him, it's always us. Jesus. Okay, Jesus, 30 years, right? Why didn't he die 11 years old? Jesus had to find out who he was. And the whole time he didn't sin, even before he was sent out by God. He, God raised him up. And he didn't sin the whole time. But he didn't let him walk out in that authority yet until he was ready. Right? 33, he knew the time. Then he went and he met John at the river Jordan, right? And then what happened? He was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit came on him like a dove. Not, it wasn't a dove. It was a fire. It was a power. It was... It was God. And Jesus kn knew who he was. Why? Because he saw, of course, his mom told him, hey, you're the Messiah. Of course, he probably heard that a much. Time. Hey, this is what you're going to do. Then he started, hmm. And then the Holy Spirit was bearing witness with him, which is what should be happening to us when we read the New Testament, when we read the Bible, knowing who we are. See, everyone's all about identity, but then they forget about the authority that comes with the identity. I'm a son, I'm a son. Well, then start to take dominion like a son. Right? Everybody, you know, then I'm a son. Well, then what is what do you have? Jesus was the Son of God. What did he have? All dominion, all authority, and all power. But then really says, Oh, but that was Jesus, but we're now in him, right? So if we're in him, then we move in him and read in him, then we should also act in him, just like him. When God knew, He knew. And the old met the new at the River Jordan. Make known. We are authorized by the author and the finisher of what? Our faith. Not our works. Our faith. Our faith in His works. 
Workspace will make you lose authority in your heart and your mind. This is why we must always keep our eyes on Jesus. Because religion always gets your eyes back on you. But I didn't do this. I didn't say this. I didn't. But see, it's the authorities in Him, not in you. And that's where salvation comes in Him, not in you. Now we know faith without works is dead. So faith without authority is dead. No power. Same thing. You got to take it. Take it. The kingdom of, uh, of God suffers violence and the violence. Take it by force. But if you don't force it, you won't have it. The difference of the authority before and after the cross. See, the difference before the cross, Jesus still didn't go to the cross yet, but he also gave the disciples and them authority in his name. So they went in his name, even though... So it was the name of Jesus that was doing the power and the works. That right there should tell you it's not about your works. It's about His name. Because He didn't even yet go to the cross yet, but He sent them out in His name. But then He gives us the mysteries and all the things about the name. You know, He created in the beginning God made male and female, and the two shall become one. And then, it, then Paul talks about, and this is the great mystery, and I'm not talking about man and woman, but I'm talking about Christ and the church, right? Our one. And that's where submission and covering come in. He covers our sin, He atones it, and they're gone. So the difference is now, let's get deeper. Let's talk about the keys he gives us. In Matthew 16, 19. And I'll give unto them the, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. Where, do you, where is all power, authority, and dominion? It comes from what? God in heaven. He's on the throne. Now the Bible says what? We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Right? But the minute we sin, we don't know no way. Right? So then if, we, if Satan can make us live sin conscious instead of holiness conscious, instead of righteousness conscious, we'll, we'll never take dominion because we don't feel we have the authority and we don't feel because we go by feelings all the time. We go by emotions. We go by circumstances. We go by that all the time because we're carnally minded instead of being kingdom minded. So God, Jesus' whole reason for coming to seek and save not to make us kingdom minded because in the garden was the dominion and Adam and Eve had all authority until Satan Satan didn't go take it he convinced them to give it to him subtly deceivingly and that's what we know even when Adam did not even Eve was still not sin was still not accredited to Eve yet until Adam sinned with her because her eyes were not her eyes were not fully open until he sinned. It says in the Bible that when Eve convinced Adam to eat the apple, then they both were naked and they knew. So, obviously, if Eve ate the apple, she and she would have saw, she would have already ran and hid. I'm naked. But what did she do? She went and found out. This is good. That's that's showing the authority and the covering and the submission of the wife to the husband and of us, Christ, and the church. We've been over this type of teaching before. That's the power of being in Christ and covered from our sins as well. Having all authority because we're submitted to Him. So that's when we do sin, we need to run back to Him and ask for forgiveness and keep, keep our heart clean because the devil will make us stop taking dominion over his, that's what his job is, to stop us. He can't take us to hell anymore, so he wants to stop us. If we're blood-bought, born again, and saved. So, the difference of those two authorities. So he says in Matthew 16, 19, And I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So what he's saying, I'm giving you the keys. 
So he says, I'm giving you the authority, the same authority that I have in heaven, I'm giving it to you right here on the earth. We have it. He just said it. And he, that was after the cross. He was now prophesying, I'm going to give you authority. I'm going to give you the keys. Well, bondage means you're locked up. Or you have the keys to set them free. Keys. Chains have keys. You know, unless someone made a chain and didn't... But see, when God made... When God made... Adam and Eve and made and locked the garden and basically in he heaven Satan could had the authority he had the keys he could open and close and do, do the things on the earth he still has dominion over sinners and he still has power over them that want to give it to him and that's why he still tries to take it rob it from the church the, to the unsaved, it's, he has it already, and Jesus can give it back. To us, he still convinces us to give it to him, just like in the garden, and we deal with that all the time. He doesn't rightfully get it, but we give it to him. He deceives. That's what it's called, deception, illusion. So, and whatever they bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever they lose. And then the Bible says, If any two touch any one thing, they shall have whatsoever they ask. Any two agreeing on anything on earth shall have whatsoever they ask from the Father in heaven. So, now let's go to Revelation 1, 17-19 about the keys. And when I saw him, I, I fell on my, his feet as dead and laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last, for I am, I am that one that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive evermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. See, he's speaking in Revelation now of those keys. And keys mean authority. And authority is apostolic. So he wants all of us to be apostolic. Not all of us, of course, called to be apostles, but are called to be apostolic. Everyone in the church should be apostolic. That means authority-driven, authority-based, uh, governmental, territorial, taking dominion everywhere. But we continuously don't do it because of what the devil makes us think. That's why he said, cast uh, all imaginations and, and, and anything that exalts itself above the authority that you have above the dominion and the power that God has given us so and right and he says this and I am alive and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which, you are, which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And as God gave David the kingdom on the earth, in the natural, right? He said, Samuel, Saul has, and he says, Saul, the kingdom has been taken from you this day, and the anointing is taken from you. So there was a kingdom on the earth that God was... The only one, it was in that dominion of, of, of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So basically, God had those chosen people. So David was taking it by force of taking dominion with guns, bow and arrows, swords, slingshots. <laughs> he used to slingshot, whatever it was. And now we take it by authority. And that's why those five stones... David took five stones out of the river, out of the Spirit. Now we have the power and authority out of the Spirit of the living God gives to us. And the fivefold ministry is the authority and the governmental leaders of the church to cover and equip the church. And also underneath that with elders and different things. But we're not talking about the flesh. We're talking about the Spirit. So, he says, write these things. So he writes them all. That's when the book of Revelation starts. 
Some of those things haven't happened yet. And we're in them now. Where are we now in those things? And what do we see now? Revelation 2 and 3. And what type of church are we? What, what this and what that? Right? So we need to know. We need to have the Spirit of God. We need to know the truth. And we need to have the oracles, the, 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 the inspiration coming to us. So David was like the natural and Jesus is the spiritual. David still couldn't take the kingdom of the devil away. David couldn't really have control over his sin. That we know that David had a problem with lust his whole life. But now we have dominion over those things because of Jesus. Didn't mean David was not saved because it was faith in the in in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that saved them. It's still his faith in the same God, but now he it's faith in Jesus and the cross for us. But now we have... See, David was able to hear from God, and when David did sin, God did bring consequences. God did kill his firstborn. God did stop speaking to him, that which made David seek after him even more, in that God would give him mercy. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So... He gives us mercy, and mercy triumphs over judgment, but He also has judgment. So we see that. So in Isaiah 22, 21 through 23, now Isaiah is prophesying about this authority. And I will clothe him in a robe. Robes represent authority. Right? The king has a robe in every kingdom. You go look at the, the king of England, go back, they have these robes, Right? It's a sign of authority. And him, thy robe, and that's why they put the purple thing on him. They were trying to mock him at the cross. And they put a crown on him. A crown represents kingdom, authority. Kings have crowns. So, and he gives us all a crown. So, on the cross, they put a crown of thorns on him. So they are mocking him. And, and also the color purple is a color based on royalty. Purple, is, it means royalty. And strengthen him, thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand. And he shall be further, he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open his, open and no None shall shut. And he shall shut, and none shall open. What's that authority? I lock it, it's locked. I have to open it, it's open. Jesus said he's given us the keys. Whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He's given us the spiritual dominion to take authority over the spiritual realm. Religion says, oh God, pray God, help me God. God, do this. God, heal my children. God, help me. God, God, God. And, and then God gets so frustrated because he's like, I did it. You see my son when he said it was finished? He's saying, now take it and do what I've done. Because now he says, we have the same authority. So prayer should be a moral relationship of what to do and who to do it for. And when to do it and when to be led. So now we're not praying to beg God, we're praying to be in step with God. And if God's not doing it, we don't cry out to do it because God doesn't want to do it. So, like, you know, I'm not trying to come against these things, but just like prayer chains, it's like, oh, so if I can get 1,000, 1,000, 1 million, so just waiting on that one, one God's just like, you know, Start that prayer chain, and okay, nope, it's not enough people praying yet. I'm waiting for 2,000. When it hits 2,000, I'm going to heal them. How ridiculous is it? Right? But we do it all the time because religion, and we feel so good. But the Bible does say pray for the sick. Pray for them and be done with it and believe it. But God's doing so many miracles that we don't even know about. People are getting sick and unsick in seconds. God's keeping people from even being sick for purposes and plans we don't know. He is super, He is in authority of all. 
Most of the time we want prayer chains because we want everyone to know what's happening because we want pity. God knows our heart, the reason we do things that we do. You know? Just be real. Say, hey, you know what? This all happened, it sucks. And I want you to know because I'm going through this. Go come. Someone encourage me. Be real. Just say, I need encouragement. It's, oh, pray. Pray for me. Start a prayer chain. Or the other thing is, bless me. If you, hit, if you type blessed five times, you're going to be blessed. Okay, God, that, you're, God's that stupid. My blessings come from the computer hitting, typing things. All right, say amen, and today's going to be a good day. Amen. I mean, we have it all, but we follow it. I mean, these are the types of things that draw the crowd, you know. But it's real deeper than that. We have authority in the church. The devil wants to play around with false prophets. He wants to play around with these things. But he doesn't want you to know what you have. Everyone's all about identity, but yeah, I'm a son, I'm a son. But then God's like, well, then move that mountain. Then cast out that demon. Then heal that person, right? But then all the religious people will attack you. The sensationalists will attack you. Who do you think you are? Nobody but Him. He's everything. And my God, if He went through all that to give us the keys and we don't use them, you think He's happy about that? He got beaten. He got stripes, spit on, mocked. As a king, he said he could have called 10,000 legions of angels to deliver him, but he won't because of you and me, because he wants to take back what was stolen in the garden, the power and the dominion, and then we don't use it. You think he's happy about that? But religion will say, oh, who does he think he is? Oh, you can't do that. Or look at him. Look how prideful. It's Jesus. Jesus is like, yeah, it's me, but I did it for you. Because he hates to know. We all have a enemy that... We can all agree on it's the devil. But the religion wants to turn it on one another. So, he said, he took the keys of hell, death. And that's why Jesus says, death, oh death, where is your sting? Grave, oh grave, where is your victory? Jesus took it. He went, when he got crucified. Many people want to argue about that, but where do you think he went for three days? It said he went to the lower parts of the earth. And this says that this is a place called... And he went in there when the, the darkness party was going on. And he went in there with all authority and said, hand it over. And the enemy had to hand it over to him and he took the keys from him. So now the enemy acts like he has the keys. And he still has the people in sin because if you don't, have, if you don't get Jesus and you don't get the blood of Jesus, you still, act, you still are under his power because... He's still the father of sin, the father of lies. He's still here because God still has him on the earth. And he's still deceiving and being and deceiving and people are being deceived from him. But it shouldn't be us. The blood bought. Amen? Amen? So God wants us to begin to take that authority, but we gotta know what we have before we take it. And he says this in Isaiah. And he shall clothe him in a robe and strengthen and girdle him. And the government shall be in his hands and the, and the heavens. And the key of the house of David I will give and lay upon his shoulder. And he shall open and no man shall shut and shut shall no man shall open. And I, and he also says that in Revelations about us. So he says that before he came to the cross, Isaiah is prophesying about it. And Jesus says, it's you, it's me and in you and you and me. And I'll fasten him as a nail in a sure place. Ooh, there's prophecy, prophecy of a cross. And what are we now? We are bond servants of the Most High God. Do you know one of the names of God is a bond servant? One of those 12 names, I forget which one it is right now. But they would nail their ear to the something, to the door? Doorpost. Door and then they put the blood of Jesus over the doorpost. And people's like, talking about tribulations, like, Oh, Jesus is not going to be, beat up his bride. No, we're covered. He's not going to do nothing to us. The wrath is not for us, but we'll be here to show them the door to life so they can repent to the last and last and last second, to the last trumpet, seven blows, and Jesus returns. And that's it. 
So, fasten as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne. See, it was the, it was the cross that gave him the, the, the throne back over all heaven and earth. Revelation 3, 7 says, And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, I write these things, that is holy, he that is true, and he hath the key of David, he that opens, no man shuts, here it is now in Revelation, and he shuts and no man opens. We have that authority. Christ has it, we're in him. <laughs> Do you guys understand that? Have, we, you, under, have, you, have you really grasped it? Even more than just his name now, we have him. Religion will fight you tooth and nail about this. Oh, it's the name of Jesus. But you know what? Let's get deeper into this thing. Let's go real deep today. Revelation 21, 20, verse 1 says, And the angel come down from heaven, ha having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Oh, picture it now. He saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. He had the key and, and a great chain around his hand. So it must have been the gates. There was a big chain around it that with a lock on it, right? So he didn't only take... He came with the keys and he also just took the chain and opened up the gates. That's Revelation. That's in 20, prophesying of what Jesus said. He went and... So let's go deeper now about us. And who are we? Are we not the church? Matthew 16, 15 through 19. And he said unto them, But who do you say I am? Because right before that, it's like, you know, some say you're prophets, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, come from the dead. Some say that, but he's like, to you, disciples, you know, the ones that you really know me, you know, you've seen the miracles, you've been walking with me, you know all the things, you've seen the authority that I've been using and the dominion that I have. Yeah, you know, they don't really know me, but you do. Who do you say that I am? And then what happens? Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Jesus wasn't even... Jesus hadn't even yet began to tell them all about the Messiah and things. He was just showing them about the authority and the dominion and, 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 and telling them about eternal life all the time. But thou art the Christ. He never really is telling them about the Son of the living God. And then he says thus, now thou art the little Christ. Sons of the living God, right? Dominion, authority. Religion will go crazy about this. And there's things in the Bible where it says you're little, but, you know, let's, let's just keep it. We don't want our, um, them to get too carried away and try to give them ammunition to attack the church. Jesus answered and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Right there, revelation. Revelation of who Christ was. And the whole time now, Christ is saying, revelation of who you are. You have to know who He is before you ever know who you are. You have to know what authority He has before you ever know what authority you have. And Jesus answered. No, and then He said, okay. He said, upon this, That thou art Peter, and upon this rock, what rock? The revelation. I will build my church. And what? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Why is it happening all the time? Why is pastors committing suicide? Why is people in bondage? Why is Satan running the churches. Because not that they don't have authority, they're not taking it. Big difference. It's there. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh, but religion will fight you every day. 
Who do you think you are? Nobody, but I know who he is. What do you think you have? I have nothing, but he has everything. And I have him. So I guess I have everything. Thou art. And I'll give him. The, hell, the gates of hell will not prevail, and I'll give him the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever shall bind on earth. So what he's saying, I will give him the authority that I have. I will give him the dominion that I have. I will give him the kingdom that I have. And whatsoever they bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever they loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. The authority of the name. So, we see the name. We have the name now. What's the new name? doesn't say it. But on them is written a new name. See, look at a marriage. And what authority? You know, you can go down and, and uh, you say, well, I got to get the authority from the state of Florida. So I need to get a license. So now we have the license from heaven. I need to go get ordained. So I need to get from, you know, the courthouse. So... Somebody marries you and you, they say, well, from what? The power invested in me from the state of Florida. I pronounce you. But now we have the power invested from the kingdom of heaven by God to give us the power to bind and loose. The power of the kingdom of God. And religion hates it. Because now you have to do something. Before he did everything. Religion is nice because God does everything and you just got to be a nice little good little boy. And when you're not, you just thank God for what he did on the cross. But that's, that gives the devil full authority and power over your family, over your life, and over your circumstances. That's not what Jesus died for. And it gets kind of aggravated when we don't believe and receive and take what was lost back because he didn't die just to save you. He died to take back everything that the enemy stole. And that was authority and power. So, we see right here, authority in the name. And then he says, God says, the two shall become one. Well, when did it happen? At the cross. When we receive Jesus, we become one. That is the new covenant. We have a covenant with him. It's a blood covenant. And when a man and a woman got together in the, the sanctity of the Jewish customs, the, the bridesmaid were really, they were serving, taking the, blood, the bloody towel off the, off the chambers of the, blood, of the bed chamber because the woman was a virgin and she would bleed. And if she didn't bleed, they're in big trouble. You better have a razor blade on you because then they'll be like, she wasn't a virgin and it's a big trouble. So now... We, and they would do that, and they would what? They would bring them food, drinks, for seven days, consecration. Seven days of being there. Then they'll go out, no work, just be with your, and now we call it a honeymoon kind of thing. We change things, and, but it was all from the Bible. So, that's where the bride's maids, because they were, they were maids to the bride and groom. So, they would serve them, and they would stay in bed for seven days and not leave the bed and then come out and that was to seal the deal Jesus sealed the deal on the cross we have seven churches seven and he did it through the blood covenant so that was and then he says but I'm not talking about the man and the woman Adam and Eve said two shall become one but I'm talking about Christ and the church so when a man and a woman and the woman says, I do, to the power invested in whatever, what he says, the two become one and the woman takes on the man's name. So if you have someone's name, you have his authority. When you take someone's name, the power is in the name, right? But you have it now. Before they were using it, but after the cross, we have it if we're born in again. So 
So we saw them, ca- then, then they came and says, we saw them casting out demons in your name. Should we stop them? They asked Jesus. And this will smash the, the theology of the name cult doctrine. Because the authority is in the blood, really. It's not in the name, but it is in the name because the name is above every name. In the name of Jesus Christ, because of the blood, and because there's no sin, he's the only one that had the name, was named without any sin. So it, it is in the name, but when the blood was shed, we were able to take his name and authority on the cross. So, well, it's Yeshua. Well, it's this. You can't. Well, then how come we still can cast out G- n- devils in the name of Jesus? If we have to use the Jewish name. See, that's, a, that's a, another demonic distraction. Straining on a gnat and swallowing Yeah, his name's... Well, if my name is... Um, what's that? Um, Juan, right? And I go to another country and the J turns into another symbol. And... What's one of those names that people... Jose. Joshua. You know? In Germany, the W sounds like a V. So it's pronounced different, but it's still the same name. So there's different tribes and tongues in every nation, but it's still the same name behind it. See, they want us to become all Jews again too, but God set me in this nation, so why would I try to operate in the language and authority of another nation when God's taken dominion over every nation and every tribe and every tongue. And some of you might not know about that, but that's another big debate and and religious spirit out there. So the covenant comes at the cross. The covenant comes in the bed marriage chamber. The covenant is sealed by the blood. Even though they say, I do, the blood sealed it. They were still following Jesus and they said, I do, I'll follow you, I'll follow you. None of them really could do it until the blood was shed. And then they had the power and authority to do it. Right? So in Christ we move and breathe and, and, and we have our living, our being. So many doctrines are binding the church instead of loosing them to be and to become. Sons of God. So... Let's demonstrate and use the police, right? So, right here, there's all you guys are police, right? You, you've gotten the badge, you've went to the school, you have the authority. And right now, I come over here and I do a crime. You're all looking at me. I do this crime. Okay, I steal that, okay. I steal that piano and I walk out the door and you all just sit there and look at me. Now you have authority to arrest me. You have authority to stop me. You have authority to buy me with handcuffs and take me downtown and book me and put me in jail. But you just sit there and look at me. So I keep robbing and stealing all around you in your churches, in your houses, in your communities and you, the church just sits and smiles and says, Love, just love them. But the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but spirits and principalities in high places. Right? If the church can get this, Jesus is going to come back faster. So in Christ we move and have our being. So, we see, right? The police doesn't matter. Oh, we're just like that. The police would have to chase down, make initiative, take captive every thought, take dominion, walk it out, clean up the streets, right? What's it good to have, okay, yeah, we, we got all this crime here in New York City, you know? Well, we're going to double the police force. But the police just stand there and do nothing. You can triple it, you can build the church, you can get thousands and thousands and thousands of people saved sitting in the, in the church and have no change. Not even in their own lives because they're not taking authority about their own lives or in the dominion around them. So 
So what we have now in churches everywhere is just like in America, where they have laws, right? They have authority, but the liberals and those want to, you know, do it their own way. Well, the, the, the real authority is, you know, the Ten com uh, the, we have, well, we have the Ten Commandments and we have the Constitution in America, right? And we have the laws in place. So, the church has become a sanctuary city for the devil. Just like when people cross the borders and they say to them, you know, oh, come to this city, we'll, we'll leave you alone. We're not, gonna, we're not going to enforce and we won't let ICE come here and we won't authority. We're not going to let the prophets, apostles, the real Christians come in the church and make it righteous and, and, and clear the atmosphere and bring in the kingdom of heaven. So just come to the sanctuary city and we're not going to enforce that law because we don't, we want everything the way we want it. Do you see it? The devil is going to go hang out where there's a sanctuary city. He's going to stop hanging out in your part of the town if you keep arresting and taking. So the whole church would stop acting like a sanctuary city when the devil breaks the laws, stealing things that aren't his. But he says, I, I steal. And the devil stole seven times more back. Well, don't let him steal anything in the beginning. So, so many doctors are binding the church instead of loosing them to be and to become sons of God. And so we have this. Many now are acting hyper-faith. They have every right. Why? Because everyone's getting that as hyper-faith. Because hyper-faith has been being used for prosperity and personal gain, but not to advance the kingdom. See, they've taken the faith and used it for their own gain. And that's why everyone has a right to get mad about the whole faith movement. But really, the movement of faith has been in since the beginning. It's always been faith that moves God and faith that moves us. And the devil can see if you really believe. Come out in the name of Jesus. That's how. No. He's like, you don't know who you are. Right? But Jesus knew who he was. So what happened? Let's see. I'm going to read it here, so I'm not going to preach about it right now because I think i got a scripture for it. So... Jesus knew who he was, so what did they say? He's different. Hmm. The, scribes and, the scribes and Pharisees really didn't know who they were. <coughs> right? Because they always... You could tell when someone doesn't really know what they're talking about. Well, the devil also knows the Christians that don't really know who and what they are. And he eats their lunch. He steals their lunch. And he beats them down in their mind and in their bodies. So, it's always been about faith in Jesus, what He did, what He is, and what, and, <clears throat> and what He is, and what He is. And He says, Thou I say, Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. On Jesus. Right? Jesus is the rock of our salvation. He's the rock. Upon this, we'll build the church. Upon this authority, upon this dominion of Jesus that we are supposed to be having and taking, that's how the church prevails. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Everyone gets all jacked up on identity. It's awesome, but the problem is they're not truly believing because they're work-based or conditioned. I know who I am, but I can't do that do you know what I just did? Right? Oh yeah, but I can't. No, not now. I've just, I just sinned. I just got angry. I just, you know, I just looked at this. I just did that. So that's why the devil gets us to do all those things because it takes your sense of authority, but it's not ever been in you. It's never been. It's always in what he did. You see how he gets you to stop? Because you look at, you're just... A little Christian. You're just, you can't even get through the day. So, how am I going to tell the devil? But that's pride. Because you're taking your, the authority of Jesus and putting it on you. And he doesn't like that. 
This is good sound teaching. I know we all should know all this already, but we need to get back down to the basics. Because if you move on when you feel righteous, then you're barely going to do anything. But if you move on because He is righteous and you're in Him, you'll always be able to push back the darkness. This tactics in the mind and of the devil. Find his strategies and beat him at his own game. Well, if, you, if you're playing a team, right? Anybody would go find the strategies of the devil and of the other team, the playbook, right? Or, you know, let's steal their playbook and you'll know what he's doing. Well, my God, you should already know the devil's playbook by now. He's been messing with you. How many years old are you now? So you have his playbook. You should know it in the back of your hand. So... And you know when he's going to make a move. And then, and you, but you have your playbook, which is the Bible, which gives you all authority by the power invested in God of heaven. If you're born again, you're now sons of God, so you have all dominion and authority. He has given you the kingdom and the keys of hell, death, and the grave, and the power over sin and all those things in our life. See, look. Before the cross, the power was and always has been in the name. Now we are in the name. All right, it was the name. We used the name. Now we're in the name. Where does it say in the Bible? Because you're going to have that. In Him we breathe. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. No, we're long, longer in the world. Jesus is the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is not by observation. The kingdom of God is within you. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. So, there we see it. See behind every flesh and blood, but he's not. So ultimately, who is our enemy? The devil. And he's behind everything in flesh and blood, but we don't fight flesh and blood. We take dominion and power and the authority by binding and loosing. See, the devil is still using the spirit of religion or the python to stop your authority in him. That's what he does. Religion. Oh God! You see, the more you know about your authority, the more the enemy will try to stop you. But, the less he'll be able to because the more you'll know who you are. So that's where promotion starts to come. I want to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Well, start taking authority. People say, I'm going to know, I'm going to study the Bible for 10 years. I'm just going to wake up one day and I'm going to walk on water and I'm going to be superhero Christian. That's what religion tells you. Keep reading the Word. Keep reading the Word. No, keep taking dominion. Keep taking authority. Keep, and He'll keep coming at you and you'll be getting stronger and stronger and stronger. This is, this is where true promo promotion comes. Mark 1, 21, 23. In uh, Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were established at, astonished, I mean, at his doctrine. Why? Well, it tells you right here. For he taught them, as one that had authority, and not as one like the religious scribes. Again, he's talking about, he is the book, not, look, the book says, Jesus, no, I'm the living word, just say it. And he made us the same. Who are you in the identity of the pages in that sense? And he says, Doctrine he taught them is not one as but but one that had authority. And there in the synagogues a man with unclean spirit and he cried out. And what did Jesus do? He delivered him. Right in the authority. Can't talk. What's the sense of talking about a book that's all about authority and seeking and say that which is lost, that's all about Jesus coming to give us back and not doing it? Paul didn't come with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in power and demonstration of the cross. Power and demonstration of the kingdom. The, word, 
The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Why? How did he do that? Because he knew who he was. See, knowing our identity is to know our authority. Not just to know I'm a son of God. Great, I'm going to heaven. I'm God's son. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Yes, he loves you, but he wants to use you. He's not use you. He wants to you to take dominion. He wants to work with you as one. The two shall become one. This is the mystery of the kingdom of God, Christ and the church, the body of Christ, the arm, the foot, the leg, the hand, all working together. Matthew 21, and I'm almost done. The baptism of John, whence he come from heaven or a man? And they reason unto themselves, saying, If it shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did you not believe him? But, and if we say from man, we fear the people, because they hold John as a prophet. And Jesus answered and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither I tell you what authority I do these things. Because he didn't have to. He didn't have to come under their authority. Because he's under the authority of God. Authority looks like something. It's just not something you talk about. See? When he did that, he said it's not, he didn't look like, he looked like one of authority. Satan knows when you know, then he trembles. Satan knows when you know, and then he has to obey. Satan knows if you're just trying to do something you learned from the letter or something you're living, believing, and in the kingdom. Because you will look like one with authority. They say, why did that person in the name of Jesus? I said, in the name of Jesus all night. And then this one guy comes up and loosed in the name of Jesus, and Satan goes out. Is that Christian have more authority than the other? No, it says we all have the same authority. He, and we're going to see right here, because it wasn't just the 12. Right here he sent out 70. After these things, the Lord appointed an, another 70 also. He sent them out two by two to face his face in every city. Now this was by the name still only. With whether himself would come. Therefore he said unto them, the harvest is true. Truly great, and the laborers are few. But therefore, where the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into his harvest? Go your ways. Behold, I will send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither person nor scripture, and anyone to salute you by the way. And whatsoever house you enter first, peace be on the house. But if the, if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. But if not, it shall turn back to you. In the same house remain eating and drinking. Such things as you they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house and into whatsoever city, and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you. Heal the sick that are there, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is has come nigh unto you, because Jesus is the kingdom, and I'm coming in, in His name. And whatsoever city you enter, receive you not, and go your ways, and unto your streets, and the same. And it says, And every city that cleaveth unto the wipe the dust against you, notwithstanding assured them that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you, but say unto them that it shall be more tolerable than Sodom and Gomorrah. Then, so then when they don't receive Jesus, it's worse for them than if they didn't hear about Him in the first place, is what He's saying. And he says, a great while ago, repentance sit inside. They, they would do that. And says, okay, go sit, sit down. And he says this, verse 16. And he that heareth, you heareth me. Because what were they doing? They were just preaching the kingdom. They weren't going into Revelation. They weren't saying, oh, I got this teaching. They were teaching, they were preaching Jesus. And Jesus working with them. But we know in Mark, he had already gone to the cross. And then he went back to, the, to them and he said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, set, uh, set at liberty. And then, then, then in Luke earlier it talks about, and then he did that already, so he gave them authority. 
And he said, and, and cast out demons. And these signs shall follow them that believe. To all them that believe, these signs shall follow all of them that believe. So we see that, right? So it takes belief to have the authority. You have to believe you have it. All them that what believe. Believe in Jesus. Believe in the cross. Believe in the mystery. Believe in the resurrection. Believe in the words that he says. Believe. If you believe in me, he says, if my words abide in you and I abide in you, you shall bear fruit. And authority is one of the fruits we should be bearing. And, and the seventy returned again, Lord saying, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the devils are subject through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He's saying, see my name, I've always been there. I'm one with God. God sent me and sent his son. I'm the son of God. I'm coming to name. My name is Jesus. I'm Emmanuel, God with us. So he had that the whole time. And here I'm letting you use my name now. So go. And other people were hearing about this name. And they didn't really even know him. And the name was still powerful. And they were doing things. They're like, wait, where do they come from? They're doing what we're doing in a name. That's very powerful about the name. How much more powerful if we're one with the name now? And he said unto them, then he says, Behold, yes, my name, I was, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the first and last. I was and is and what is, I, well, how does that go? I am, I was, I am to come. You guys know it. Uh. Yeah, so, so he was the one that cast down Satan. Imagine that. If Jesus would have fallen into temptation. Behold, Satan as lightning. He's like, here, I am he. And behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, scorpions. Those are evil things. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by means hurt you. Notwithstanding, I rejoice. Do not rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Don't rejoice that you cast out demons. Rejoice that, you're, that you are the kingdom of heaven. Don't rejoice that you are doing these things. Rejoice because the kingdom that you are in. You see what I'm saying? We're rejoicing in the kingdom because it's like this. I'm rejoicing because I'm one with Jesus now, not because... I can do because those other people were doing those things and they're like, don't rejoice because some of those people can do those things and go to hell. But now that us that are born again, blood bought, and we have this authority and dominion, he's saying that is what we need to rejoice in. That I'm in the kingdom of God, that I'm going to live forever, that Jesus, that I'm one with the Father and one with the Son. Notwithstanding, Satan wanted to get him to fall into sin, so then the cross would have been nothing. Because it was he who knew no sin became sin for us. So if Satan the whole time was trying to get Jesus to sin, but he didn't. So the name was still standing since he came from heaven because he had no sin. So they were using that, that name that had no sin to have found him. And now we're in him that had no sin. We are crucified with Christ, no longer us that live, but Christ that live in us. So now we have to live in that authority and dominion. But we're living in sanctuary cities and churches. Last scripture. Knowing their thoughts, this is the next chapter. Knowing their thoughts, and he said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided cannot stand. If Satan be divided against Satan, his kingdom shall stand. Uh, how shall his kingdom stand? Because I say, if I cast out devils through the devil, and if by the devil cast out devils, by whom do the sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if by the finger of God I cast out devils, by what? The finger, the authority. What is authority? Please, me go. 
right? Who what does the policeman do? Blows the whistle, makes the noise, makes sound, and has the authority to stop traffic. Who gave him that authority? God in heaven. We have the authority to stop the devil, direct the traffic, do the things, but he gets us to stop taking our authority. So what do you do? Blow the whistle, direct traffic that way. Hey, if I got out there, you know, dressed as a civilian and got on a road, nothing was going on, and I just started stopping traffic, well, and I stopped traffic and started directing them the other way, and everyone's going to be going on. People, first of all, they'll stop the car and they're like, well, what happened? What are you doing? Is someone dies? Or and, I don't, and I don't say nothing. Eventually, a lot of people would probably follow that because they'd be like, but really I don't have the authority. And the first person that didn't want to would be the first person that was right. Now, if I put the uniform on and I wore the badge... No one would even ask. They'll be like, I'm just going to obey. That's what the devil has to do. But if you're there doing things, but you have no authority, be like cars come out, they're like, stopping this, and they're like stopping traffic. Or you just try to stop traffic. And you put up there and you just stand there. Eventually people will start honking at you. But, but what, get out of the road, you whatever. And you just stand there. And people will start driving around you and start throwing stuff at you because you have no authority to be there. See, Satan knows who has the authority to be there by what you believe. So authority is what it's all about. And you need to take back your authority. So he says, if I cast out devils by the finger of God, then you know the kingdom has come nigh to you. What? If, what he's saying, if you see the authority that I have, then you know it's the kingdom. If I have no authority, then there's no kingdom. Because I have the king and I've given you domain to take authority over every situation. And when the strong man is armed to keep his palace and goods in peace. But when a stronger, so that's what Jesus came to give us. We're stronger than the devil now. When a strong one has come unto him and overcome him, he has taken all his armor and he's trusted in and divides his spoils and, and is not with, and he that is not with me he and gathereth not with me, scattereth. Father, we thank you that you've given us all authority on the cross by your blood. We have the keys to bind and loose. We have the keys that you've given us, not because of our works, not because of our merit, not because of what we know, not because of, but of, of who you are and what we are in you. So, Father, we ask that we repent for our sins, God, and we we. We continue to believe on your name and believe on what you did. And in you, we have our, your name. That we are Christians, Christ-like. Made in your image. The image of you is put, being put in, putting back in us that was stolen in the garden. That image is now being replaced once again. And we thank you for that DNA from heaven. That authority from heaven. The power from heaven that we have, that all them that believe, that these signs shall follow them, taking dominion over the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, that you will have your church, and it will not be a sanctuary city. It'll be, it'll be demon-free. The gates of hell will not prevail, that we will lock the, gate, the devil in his cage whenever we feel like it. And we take every thought captive, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but, every, but spirits and principalities in high places. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.